Hello and welcome, my name is Eli and in this video we're going to be looking at how to integrate PayPal server side using Firebase Cloud Functions. I upload videos every weekend so don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Also I just created a Twitter account where I write about anything I'm working on and the type of content you see here in my YouTube channel. Now without further ado let's get started. I have a simple project I'm going to be working with. It's an HTML file, a CSS, and a JavaScript file. Uh, you can find all this code if you go to github.com slash enterflash and look for the tutorial repository or I'm going to leave you a link in the description as well. Now the index.html file, I'm going to open it with the live server extension from Visual Studio Code. And as you can see, it's just a simple card that says new camera. And here's where we're gonna add the PayPal button. But first, let's create a Firebase project. I'm gonna call it Firebase PayPal. Just disable analytics. And once you create it, go to your terminal and type in npm install g Firebase tools like this to install Firebase globally. So in my case, I'm gonna log out. Then I'm gonna log in with Firebase login. Select a Google account and then run Firebase in it in the root of your project. I'm gonna say yes and select functions. Then use an existing project and I'm gonna pick Firebase PayPal, the one I just created. I'm gonna pick JavaScript for the language and I'm gonna say yes on the uh, ESLinter. Then yes to run npm install and install all my dependencies for the Firebase functions. Then we go to the uh, PayPal developer dashboard. I'm gonna leave you the link in the description. Select sandbox, because we're just gonna be testing for live mode, select live, and create a new app in here. I'm gonna call this one Firebase tutorial. Just leave everything else like this and create the app. This is going to provide me two things, so the client ID and the secret key. And these are, we're going to need them in a second. But first, let's go to the JavaScript SDK from PayPal and copy the script tag like this. We're going to go to our index.html file and paste it here. Then I'm going to delete all of this until the client ID and go into my PayPal dashboard. I'm going to copy the client ID and paste it here. Also, I'm going to add the currency, so I'm going to say and currency equals USD. Now we're going to add a new div right below the price and I'm going to give it an ID of PayPal button. And here's where the PayPal button is going to render, I'm going to show you in a second. Let's uh, call the, the PayPal SDK using window.paypal and then buttons and this receives a, an object, in this case uh, it ain't it is going to have two callback functions. The first one is going to be create order and it gives me the data and actions and the other one is unapproved. These are just the two that, that we're going to use, but there's a couple more that you can use there. Then we're going to say render in the PayPal button. Then if we go to our live server, you can, as you can see, there's already uh, the two PayPal buttons rendering. These don't work, but we're gonna make them work doing this. So we go into our functions folder and run npm install PayPal checkout server SDK. Then we copy the client ID from the dashboard and we're gonna run this command Firebase functions config set and then we say PayPal dot client ID equals and we paste the client ID we just copied. Then we do the same thing with the secret key. We copy it from the dashboard and we run the same command, but this time we're going to set paypal.secretkey equals and then we paste the secret key. And this is going to set uh, two environment variables in the cloud instead of storing them, let's say, in a GitHub repository or plain, in plain text. Uh, they, this is a more secure way of storing your keys. Okay, now in the code, we call the client ID with functions.config.paypal and same thing for the secret key. We then require the PayPal SDK and we create an environment. 
passing in the client ID and the secret key. Now, in this case, I set sandbox environment, but this would be live environment if you were in live mode, which is real money, real accounts, and basically in a production server. Then we're gonna get two things, the from the PayPal core, a new PayPal HTTP client, and we pass in the environment, and a new orders create request, and we store them in these two variables. Then we start our cloud function. Uh, I'm gonna call it PayPal create order, and I'm just gonna use functions HTTPS on call, and then using the request on top, I'm gonna call the request body method that receives an object in which I'm gonna put intent capture and then purchase units and this is gonna be an array of objects. The first object is gonna contain uh, the amount, the currency code and the value. Now we're gonna send this request asynchronously and for that we're gonna use the await call then the client.execute function and we're gonna pass in the request information. We're gonna store the response and we're just gonna get the result out of it and that's what we're gonna return in this first cloud function. Now for the second cloud function is gonna be called PayPal handle order, also gonna be asynchronous. We're gonna get the order ID from the data object that is coming from the client and we're gonna execute an order capture request the same way but this time we're gonna pass in the order ID and we're gonna set an empty request body then we just execute the request and we return the result once we do this these functions are ready to be deployed to the cloud but first we need to go to the ESLint configuration file in your functions folder and add a new property called parser options and in here we're gonna put igma version and then it's gonna be 2017 and this is just because we're using arrow functions and that way the ESLinter is not gonna give us any errors now we run firebase deploy only functions and this is gonna give us an error to solve it we're gonna go to the firebase console click on upgrade and select the blaze plan this is just because Firebase require us to be in the Blaze plan in order to make requests outside of their uh, network, in this case to the PayPal API. Then we just run the command again, Firebase deploy only functions, and this time everything should go fine. Now if we go to the Firebase console and go to functions, you're gonna see the new functions created here. Then we go to project settings and we scroll down and you're gonna find the Firebase configuration for your client. We're gonna copy that and paste it into the index.html file. I'm gonna format the document and just clean it up a bit, remove all these uh, comments, I don't need them. Then I'm gonna copy the first script tag and instead of Firebase app, I'm gonna put Firebase functions to get the Firebase functions part of the SDK. Then in my script.js file, I'm gonna create an instance of the first cloud function we created, which is the PayPal create order. And to do this, I call the Firebase uh, functions SDK and then HTTPS callable. And I put in here the, no the name of the first function, which is PayPal create order. Then I can just call it like a regular function in my create order callback function. And since this returns a promise, I'm gonna use then callback to uh, get the order ID here. Then we're gonna create an instance of the second function, which was PayPal handle order. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna call it by the name, PayPal handle order. Then in the unapproved section, I'm gonna call it like a regular function, but in here, I'm gonna pass in the order ID. And if you remember in my index, Dot js file we get this order id so it's needed here now uh, to get it i just do data the order id and that's it now we go to the uh, paypal developer panel into sandbox accounts and you're gonna find two accounts here the facilitator and the buyer account if you want to uh, change the password go to edit account and then change password Then uh, once we do this, 
you can test your application out by clicking on the PayPal button and just type in your uh, buyer testing account. We click login and we click on the pay button. Now, if nothing happens, everything worked perfectly fine. And just to uh, give it a little bit more um, visual feedback, I'm going to add an alert when the payment is approved here. It's going to say thanks for ordering. And as you can see, the alert is showing now and that means everything went fine. If you have no console errors, then you can now um, you have now implemented the PayPal SDK with Firebase Cloud Functions. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.